here from Border Bit. And as many people know, British people love to drink. And it's also common for people from around the world to pair booze with things. Cider on a summer's day, cheese and wine, whiskey and chocolate. There's a pro tip for you, food balls and Prosecco. As avid board gamers and as British people, we realised we could really elevate the experience and the theme of a board game if you pair it with the right drink. So, you know, holidays just around the corner, a time where classically everyone drinks a lot, particularly if you're going to be stuck in lockdown. So we thought we would share our nine favourite drink game pairings. Uh, so we're going to timestamp this. So if you just want to skip to the games you have or the games you care about, feel free to do that. They're down below. And you might just be wondering why nine? Why not a nice round number like five or ten? And that's because Tally said we couldn't. Nine's cooler. So we're going to start with the pairing that inspired this video. Maracaibo and Nam. If you're unfamiliar with Maracaibo, you'll take the role of a mercenary sailing in a big circle around the Caribbean, collecting crewmates and fighting for different colonial nations in order to gain influence with them. With the main aim being to become more famous and get more doubloons than your friends. This is a really solid Euro game by one of our favourite designers, Alexander Feister, and one of our favourite publishers, Capstone Games. To find out more about Maracaibo, check out our review here. Now, rum's a pretty obvious thing to pair with Maracaibo because it's in the Caribbean. This is where rum comes from. That's where they drink there. And to be fair, also, actually, one of the main goods you can trade in the game is sugar cane, and that's what you use to make rum. So it's quite a nice pairing. But we don't just want to say a specific type of alcohol. We want to give you a brand or a certain one to uh, pair with. So in this case, we've gone with Diplomatico. Now, firstly, we've recommended this because it's a great rum. Uh, it's really well-rounded. It's uh, not too sweet, but also smooth to drink. Uh, highly recommended. Definitely drink it neat or with a bit of ice. It's not a mixing rum. And secondly, it goes really well with Maracaibo because it's made in Venezuela, which is where Maracaibo is. So the reason we're not drinking this right now is because this is actually a friend's bottle, so <laughs> we're not allowed to. Now we go across the globe to Eastern Europe to the setting of our favourite game, Scythe. Scythe is an engine building game set in an alternate history 1920s Europe, where you'll take control of a nation and aim to make it the most powerful in the land. Now, whilst it looks like a war game, it really isn't. It's all about using the systems and the starting position you're given to gain more resources, get more land, and get more money than any of your rivals. If you want to find out more, check out our review of Scythe up here. So, due to the Eastern European industrial vibe, we've gone with vodka. You know, you've got alternate history of Russia, Poland, Ukraine in here. And these are all classically big vodka drinking countries. Uh, you know, the workers in Scythe, if this was real, they would have drunk vodka at the time due to its ease of making it and its cheapness. So you might be wondering, what vodka though? You know, is it a classic Russian vodka or maybe like a Polish Zagrówka? No, we've actually gone with a Scottish vodka called Volk. And I know what you're thinking, but Hey, it actually belongs in the game because in the expansion, one of the uh, expansion factions are Scotland or fake Scotland. So Scottish vodka, Bolt, it's uh, made in the way of whiskey, so it's made from barley. It's single malted and basically uh, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to vodka because I kind of see it as potato flavoured ethanol. Whereas this is just incredible. It's delicious. It's really uh, smooth and like creamy, has a lot of flavour and it really has like these light hints of vanilla and it's absolutely delicious. I prefer it with Coke, uh, but you can definitely drink it neat. If you want it, it's just, it's just that good. So this is our recommendation, Siphon Bolt. Cheers. Cheers. And now we move on to Viticulture. Viticulture is a game about making wine 
where you take control of a vineyard in Italy and the aim of the game is to make it the best out of all your friends' vineyards. You're going to be making wine, you're going to be fulfilling orders, there's lots of worker placement and it's just a really classic example of the worker placement genre. It's a really solid game, really good mechanics, it's very rustic in its theme. It's generally just, you know, a pleasure to get out on Friday with some friends and some wine. So obviously the recommendation here, bit of a cop out, but it just has to be done. It is wine, of course. Now we are complete wine plebs. We just drink what we like. And the recommendation that we're giving here in this instance is a wine called Fat Bastard from France. It's a Chardonnay. Now, we stumbled across this wine just because we liked the look of the label and we thought the name was funny. We're simple people. But obviously wine is a very personal preference and there's lots of different varieties around the world. So we'd say just go with whatever you like, drink the wine that you prefer when you're playing viticulture. The main point that we want to get across here is that the game is really elevated if you have a glass of wine to go with it and that could be white, rosé, red and often when we're playing with friends we have people with different tastes and we'll have lots of different types of bottles all over the table but we really like that element and really elevates the game and makes you feel like you're in a vineyard so yeah just just any wine really and if you want to find out more about viticulture check out our review of it up here and now for another Alexander Feister game this time it's Great Western Trail in Great Western Trail, you'll play a rancher trying to get your cattle to the market, whilst at the same time trying to ditch your loser cows and get in with the cool movers and shakers. Oh, lovely a cow worth three. Oh, Texas Longhorn worth five points. Wonderful. A Holstein for three. Lovely. Oh, a Jersey cow worth only one. Get out of my sight. It's very similar to Maracaibo in that you'll be looping around the board, taking actions in the locations that you stop at and generally trying to better your lot in life. It's an excellent Euro game and Alexander definitely has a very distinct style. They are very thematic games which lend themselves very well to pairing with a drink. So the drink we're going to pair with is bourbon and you know this is because it's a very American game. You're a cowboy, American rancher, and you know, they drank whiskey at the time, bourbon is American whiskey, and it, to be honest, at that point in time, it was probably safer than water, so they drank a lot of it. Um, and we've got that right here. Uh, also, bourbon is a lot smoother and sweeter than its British cousins, and this is a very smooth, well-designed Euro game, so they go nicely together. And, you know, the, the combination of the bourbon and playing Great Western Trail will really make you feel like you're, you know, a cowboy on the march to market, feel like you're at the campfire, you feel like you're tending cattle, just fits really nicely together. And for the bourbon, we've gone with this one called Eagle Rare. Uh, it's a personal favourite of mine that I always get now if I'm getting bourbon. It's a bit sharper than most bourbons, but it's also still smooth and sweet, just has a bit of a kick to it. And if you can't get hold of this, or you prefer it a little bit sweeter, the backup would be Woodford Reserve, which I think is pretty, pretty solid bourbon that you can get anywhere. So, cheers. Cheers. Now, staying in North America for a moment, this means Mariposas, a very chill game by Wingspan designer Ellis Walker, in which you'll see monarch butterflies migrating across North America every year. A very simple game which will have you just each turn playing a card in order to move butterflies but the combination of ways that you can gain victory points can you leave you feeling stumped as to which direction to take. We recently reviewed this one so for more details check it out. So here we're going to say that you should pair it with a nice tequila on the rocks um, and you know this is because you begin in Mexico, so your butterflies start down in Mexico and you have to spread them north, then you have to get them all the way back to Mexico. And obviously tequila, kind of, you know, one of the national spirits of Mexico. Secondly, we think there's a nice parallel between mariposas and tequila. So tequila, at least in Europe, is very, I think, underappreciated and probably a lot of this is due to lack of access, but it, people wouldn't go out and buy it usually. But 
I think, you know, it's just as good a spirit as any whiskey or rum. And yeah, so underappreciated. And I, we also think that Mariposa is a little bit underappreciated, mainly because we haven't seen too much talk about it since it came out. We haven't seen anyone saying anything about it or what they think. And we, we really like it. We actually, you know, considering like the hype that Wingspan got, for example, we really think that this should be up there as well. Um, so yeah, so the problem is, is that we don't have a nice fancy tequila to show you, but we'd recommend Don Julio. And the fact that we don't have one goes back to how difficult it is in the Nordics to get hold of it, basically, like a really good quality one. Uh, but yeah, if you can get a nice Don Julio or really any premium type of tequila, 100% agave, you're good to go, good to pair it. But we also want to do something slightly different with this one because we actually have the second spirit and a local spirit that fits really nicely with it as well. So there's a local company called Empirical Spirits and they distill the wildest stuff, like none of it's like anything you've ever seen. It doesn't fall into normal categories. And they kind of use these really like high tech culinary practices, but for distilling. Uh, and the guys that started it, they came out of the best restaurant in the world, Noma, which it was before it closed down to renovate. So this spirit is called, and you can kind of see their political leaning here, uh, Fuck Trump and the Stupid Fucking Wall. And basically it's kind of taken inspiration from Mexico. So it's habanero flavored, but it has none of the heat of the habanero. And it's very floral as well. So you've kind of got this like habanero floral uh, liquor, if you will. And yeah, so because you're collecting flowers in this and because of the Mexican vibe, it, it really fits like really well. And it's a really interesting drink, it's a really nice drink. So if you're someone who likes to push the boat out, then you should definitely go for this and try it out. Now on to Forgotten Waters, which is an app-driven narrative game with some light RPG elements, which has to be in contention with one of the best games of the year. In Forgotten Waters, you'll take on the role of a pirate who has just joined a new ship and is setting sail on adventure. We also reviewed this, so uh, see the link above. So, I mean, pretty obviously, being that you're a pirate, we're going to recommend rum, and the rum is going to be Havana 7. And, you know, so the thing about Forgotten Wars is it's a very, very funny game. And also it's got these RPG elements where you really are kind of pushed to do some silly pirate voices. You have to read out some funny stuff. And also the voice acting in the app, there's a lot of jokes and humour. So this is definitely, I think, an experience that goes well with some nice rum. Because, you know, if you're all drinking, it will loosen people's inhibitions to do these silly voices when they read out their backstories. You're going to laugh harder at the jokes in the app. I think it will just make it like an all-round better time. And the thing is, because, you know, you're, you're a poor pirate and you haven't got the treasure yet to complete the scenario, which is why we recommend Vine 7. And this is because this is pretty readily available rum. It's not too expensive. Uh, you can get it pretty much anywhere. But it's just a good all-rounder, and so it goes great with, you know, a game like this. Um, and pretty much just have it any way you want it. It's pretty versatile, so rum and coke, rum and ginger, in a cocktail, or just neat with ice. They're all great options. So yeah, Garden Waters and Havana 7. Sailing on now to Scotland, we have Clans of Caledonia. This is an economic game where you'll build your clan's industry leading to trading, import and export. Will you become a sheep farmer or just go straight for producing that delicious whiskey? So yeah, I mean quite clearly it's going to be whiskey and more specifically scotch due to the Scotland theme. Uh, also, we're going to go with uh, Glenlivet specifically because it's a nice solid readily available whiskey. Uh, we recently had the pleasure of going to the distillery and going on the tours and stuff, and it was incredible. We've tried a lot of different expressions, but I mean, just the, the basic ones that you can find, you know, the, the very standard product is definitely more than good enough. It's very like smooth, lovely space side whiskey. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just goes really well with Clans of You know, it's a Scotch, the game's Scottish. Uh, also within the game, your clan can literally focus on whiskey production as their main if you will, industry. Uh, secondly, a lot of the, the clans have, some of the clans have abilities which are specifically based around whiskey production. 
So again, there's, there's, there's a real theme of whiskey running through this game. So pairing it with a nice scotch is a very good idea, we think. So now we have the penultimate pairing. The game is Brass Birmingham. And this is actually currently third in Board Game Geek's Top 100. So it's a very popular game. Uh, and essentially, in this game, you're going to be taking on the role of a British industrialist between the years of 1770 to 1870 in England, in the Midlands. And you're going to be creating your sprawling industry. So you're going to do this by laying down tiles, which represent industry. And this might be, you know, textiles, iron, coal, things like that. And then you're going to connect all these tiles with canals or railways. And this creates this sprawling network across the Midlands. Now, this is one of those games where on the face of it, it sounds dead boring, but it's really, really not. It's a really great game to play. It's really fun. It's just well balanced. It's strategic and you just gotta, you gotta check it out. And if you wanna know more about it, we've got a review. So the, the drink that we're recommending to pair with Brass Birmingham is beer. Firstly, because at the time, this would most likely be the most common drink because water was not very drinkable. And actually a weak beer was safer to drink. Secondly, it fits in really nicely with Brass Birmingham because you have to have these beer tokens in order to sell your industry. So why not have beer available whilst you play? Specifically, we're recommending a British beer to really tie in with the theme. And we have gone for a Newcastle Brown Ale and a London Pride because we couldn't get more geographically specific to Birmingham in our local supermarket because we live abroad. But if you can get a Midlands beer, definitely go for that. And to be fair, Newcastle is in the north of England, London is in the south, so if you add them both together and divide it by two, you get the Midlands. Cheers. Cheers. To another game. to our last pairing and the game Everdell. Everdell is a worker placement engine building game in which you'll be building a city full of few critters. You'll be placing a worker to gain resources which will allow you to play critter cards, which will likely then gain you more resources to spend or more cards to play and thus the cycle continues. It's a lovely medium weight game with a cute and vibrant theme. Think Red Wall but without all the murder. And if you want to know more about Everdell, check out our review. So we've decided to step it up for this one, and we've done a board game cocktail pairing. The cocktail is... So you might be wondering, A, where the brown was, we drank it, B, why well, I'm wearing a different t-shirt because it's not the same time point as we filmed the original part and see what happened and that is that our neighbours are getting their house renovated and hammering starts all day and all night and it goes on for hours and hours uh, so it interrupted our last filming as you just saw but anyway so the cocktail that we're pairing with Everdell is a bramble it's a quintessential English cocktail it's very refreshing. It's a kind of more of a, you could say, an outdoorsy cocktail. It's very woodlandish. So you have 40 mils of gin. Uh, you can use any gin, any of the kind of basic ones are fine. Gordon, Sankaray, Bombay. Then 20 mils of lemon juice. Then 10 mils of sugar syrup. Then 15 mils of creme de mule on top. And all this is over crushed ice. So essentially, you know, you've got the gin which is made from botanicals and you've got a woodland game, so that goes quite well. And if you've ever read anything like Red Wall or any of those type books with little forest creatures, they're always getting off on their blackberry wines, strawberry wines, all that kind of thing. They love a fruit wine. And creme de mure is blackberry liqueur. So that goes quite well as well. Uh, it's a, a lovely little cocktail, try it out. It's not too difficult to make. You don't even have to mix anything. And yeah, so that's what we recommend with Everdale. And the title of it is Bramble. You find a bramble in a woodland. So now we're at the end. Uh, those were our recommended pairings. And we would love to know if you have any recommended pairings of games we haven't mentioned or drinks you haven't spoken about. Or even if you think we've got some of these totally wrong and you have a better recommendation. 
please let us know. Uh, we want to say we had a lot of fun filming it, so thanks for watching. And the problem we have now is after talking about all these games we love, we actually just want to play them all and we don't have time in the day, so it's a bit of an issue. If you enjoyed this video, we would love it if you could give it a thumbs up. It really helps us to grow our channel. And also please subscribe for regular board game content and reviews. Always with a touch of doggo. If you can see them behind all the boxes. <laughs> Bye-bye.